Hey Eugene here, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a little while since I've made one of these videos. I've been doing a lot of traveling. If you haven't uh, seen that on my YouTube channel, just uh, scroll up and you'll see the video where I was going to get my grandfather. Uh, he was in Ukraine. And in this video, what I wanna do today is talk about one of the conversations that I had from calling back a lead that one of my telemarketers had generated. And uh, this time what I'm gonna do is have you listen to the lead itself, the telemarketed lead, and and then I'm gonna have you listen to me have a conversation with the lead where I actually set the appointment. Um, and in this lead, just to kind of set the stage a little bit, um, we spoke to the husband, the wife was not home, and, and the husband said, yes, please call the wife back. I spoke to the husband, he's involved in the decision-making process with the wife, but uh, he said that uh, I needed to call him later in the evening so that way they both could be home. And, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna play you the sound, so we're gonna listen to the sound together of the, of the conversation that my telemarketer had and that I had, and then I'm gonna pause in certain places and then I'm going to break down why I said what I said, when I said it, um, anything that I could have done different, I'm gonna try to point it out and really give you something uh, to um, learn from because that's what I like to do on this channel. I know it's been a little while since I've done one of these videos, but frankly, with all the traveling that I've been doing, I really just wanted to sit down and just work my leads that I've been generating while I've been gone uh, and make some sales because yes, I have a couple other businesses that I that I run, datadownloadcenter.com, traintelmarketers.com, train virtualist assistance.com which will all be linked in the description below but I am an insurance agent first which is um what I try to do full full time and that takes up most of most of my day which is actually talking to clients and, and selling policies and so uh, what I uh, what I've been doing is is really just focusing on that and haven't been doing very many videos so uh, now hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm settled it's been about two weeks since I've been back and and um, I'm pretty much caught up on, on most of my work um, whatever that really means and and so in this video uh, we're just going to just going to have a conversation with this client and hopefully there's a couple learning op opportunities um, that uh, you can benefit from. Okay, so I'm just going to um, I'm, I'm going to play the sound on my computer, you'll hear it, um, and then I'll pause in certain areas and um, just give you my two cents on it. Hello? Hello, yes. Hi, Mr. And um, this is Anne giving you a call back. We actually sent this is some information regarding her upcoming. So the first thing you, that you'll notice in this lead, uh, in this conversation is, uh, we're trying to call the wife, but the husband is the one that answered the phone. So that's the first thing that I want you to, to really uh, notice here. The reason why that is important is because uh, sometimes the, the spouse is involved in the decision-making process and, and we want to make sure that we give them an opportunity to either tell us yes or no, um, even though the wife is the one that's actually turning 65. Involvement into Medicare and I was calling to make sure they received that information. Did she mention anything to you about that? No, but uh, I will tell her you call. So notice how she's saying, did she mention anything about that? The reason why we're doing that is because we're trying to get him to listen and also think back to the conversations that him and his wife have been having uh, and really um, determine whether or not um, they remember getting anything in the mail because what we've been doing is sending them some information in hopes that they see it and in hopes that they respond and what we do then is we follow up with our calls to make sure that they have received the information that we've sent them. Oh, it's okay, not a problem because that's the reason I was calling in right now. So, do you want... So regardless of what they say, they got it, they didn't get it, um, you know, they remember getting the mailer in the mail, and it doesn't really matter what lead that, that you're working. Uh, you know, they, they, made have, uh, they might have mailed you something two months ago. Of course, they're probably not gonna remember because they've mailed three other, four other things with it. And so uh, whether or not they re remember is irrelevant. What we're trying to do is remind them, and then whatever they respond with, and what I've taught my telemarketers to do is whatever the response is, okay, well, that's actually the reason why I was calling. Or you're getting a bunch of phone calls, okay, well, that's the reason why I was calling. I'm gonna help you understand what that means. Oh, you're getting a bunch of stuff in the mail? Okay, well, that's the reason why I'm calling. I'm gonna help you go through all that information. Um, I'm sick and tired of, of all the information and I don't know where to start. Okay, well, that's the reason why I was calling. 
calling. So you'll notice this uh, throughout the conversation a couple times with both the telemarketer and myself, uh, regardless of what the reaction is, a good line is, well, that's the reason why I'm calling. I'm trying to fix whatever issues you may be having. I want me to resend you the information again, and I will have Eugene follow up to make sure you receive it. So when is a good time to call her back? Mornings or afternoons work better? So the, the, no, notice how she uh, she asked two questions without letting him respond. Normally what I would do, and this she did get a coaching email on this, <clears throat> the first thing that we did is we, um, we, we want to find out, okay, whether or not they got it, maybe they didn't get it, but if they, whether or not they want us to resend that information. If they do want us to resend that information, I'm going to call back before sending anything to find out what it is that they want me to send them, uh, which is a, an excuse to have a conversation so I would consider that a lead um, and then the second question that she said asked was does morning or afternoon work better to give you a call back so I, I would have given him a chance to respond and I think she jumped a gun a little bit here uh, normally it's you know we want to send you that information again and then Eugene will follow up is that okay that we do that if they say yes okay well when's a good time to actually follow up mornings or afternoons work better so if you're telemarketing for yourself or if you're just cold calling uh, this would be a, a, a good way to to um, uh, generate a little bit more conversation, right, um, is uh, not interrupting them because that's the most important part. If you're going to ask somebody a question, you want to give them a chance to respond, which is what I told my, my telemarketer. This is the part where the lead was generated. It was generated yesterday. And then now the next part is going to be me actually having the conversation with the guy um, because he's the one who answered the phone again. Okay, so, so now it's going to be my portion where I'm calling the lead back. Hello? Hello, Mr. Edmondson? Yeah, this is, this is Eugene giving me a call back. I think you spoke to my assistant yesterday about the information that we sent y'all in the mail about her Medicare enrollment. So, um, I, I don't. So, so now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tying in what he heard yesterday what my, my telemarketer said was we sent you some information I'm saying the same thing I'm calling you back because now you spoke to somebody about us sending you some information so it's very important that you're you know it's like it's like um, it would look really bad if they went on Facebook and, and and got some information off of Facebook and then I call back and say hey you filled out some form on um, in the mail well that's not true because they they went on Facebook to do it and vice versa if they filled out something in the mail and I'm saying hey you filled out something on Facebook no I didn't I don't remember that right so I'm just calling back and saying you spoke to my assistant about the information that we've sent you I'm trying to call and confirm that information make sure you got it uh, was this insurance well this is about Medicare because she's turning 65 soon right 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 yeah, yeah. well uh, I have get them to say yes I have information about them that I know will lead them to get me to a yes answer. If you're going to be giving them a, uh, a close-ended question, make sure that the answer ends in a yes. It gets them in the yes saying mode. No, I told her about it last night. I know she's turning 65. And uh, I tell you what, can she get in touch with you about what time late, late of the evening? Yeah, that, that would work. Um, I just, I want to make sure that because I know that all these different companies are all sending her all these different information. Yeah, they send in, they yeah. send in all kind of stuff all through. Now, who are you from? What's the name of the company? So Charleston, South Carolina is where I'm from, and I represent companies like Aetna, Cigna, Mutual of Omaha. Blue okay, Park. so you So the reason why I, I'm not giving him the name of my brokerage yet is because uh, my, the, he's never heard of me, right? So I don't know whether or not he remembers or doesn't remember getting anything in the mail, whether or not he's seen my company name before. So I'm trying to, to get him to recognize companies that I work with, which is why I say I'm calling, uh, I work with companies like Aetna, Signa, Mutual, Omaha, Blue Cross, or whatever companies you name or you're working with, right? So I'm trying to throw out companies that, that I know that he's recognized before, so that way he does feel a little bit more comfortable doing business with me because he's probably never heard of me or my company which is going to be my job to try to educate him on that uh, whenever we actually do have that appointment well, Ed and all that. okay, okay. Yeah, and, and so I the uh -huh. reason why I was calling is because we we sent so she's got a bunch of confusing information <laughs> 
but we've sent her a lot of uh, information to help simplify everything that she's getting. And I was just uh -huh. calling to actually go over all that with her now. So I'm creating a, a problem. The problem is a lot of confusing information. Most people don't know where to start. That's the problem. I am the solution. I'm telling him why I sh they should be doing business with me is because I can simplify all that confusion. Um, okay, I'm, yeah, I think I think somebody sure enough confused her the other day on the phone or something. Oh man, yeah. We don't, so you know, you know, we don't we don't want no confusion. You know, I, I work in <laughs> confusion, and we don't want no confusion. Yeah. But we just want it to go. You know, be a slick deal and get what she wants right there. You know. Well, so what I'm what I do is I. So now I'm going to build a little bit of credibility with him. What is it that I do, and why is it that I'm calling? Because if if what I can do for them, or or, or, or what I do, right? So so my job, which is to educate, help them understand their options get them with whatever company they decide, right? That's that's what I do. If that's not what they want me to do, or if, that, if what I do, what my job description is, is not what they're looking for, I'd rather know, um, was it two minutes into the conversation versus 45 minutes into it. So I, I wanna build some credibility right now, which is why I'm telling him, and, and she's not here, but it's okay, because I want to win him over and I want to win her over. Because when I talk to her and he's in the background, oh yeah, is that Eugene? Tell him I said hello or whatever, right? Because I already built some rapport with him. So it's really important that you treat the spouse as if you were treating the client because they are married, right? And, and sometimes it takes, um, you gotta win both of them over. I go over how Medicare works first. I think that's the most uh -huh. important part. Uh, okay. I don't. I'm not a salesman. I don't try to sell her anything. Uh, right, what I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm going to do is help her understand how Medicare works first, and then yeah. after she understands how Medicare works, then I can go over what Aetna does, what Blue Cross does, and what United. Oh, okay. Does. And so here, I am providing value. What is the value? A lot of confusing information. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. Not yet, anyways. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to educate you. I'm an educator first, and, and this is going to be an educational conversation. Then she can make a good, educated decision once she knows how Medicare right, works. Right, right, right. Yes, sir. Yes, you, sir. Now yes, you, sir. You I said agree. evenings work better? Yeah, late of evening, I would say, uh, I don't know how late you work, but... Uh, well, I, I, own the, I own the company, so I'm going to work as long as I need to. <laughs> you tell me. Okay, uh... <laughs> Uh, how about this, uh, let's see, let's see, now, how do you get my number on, uh, the billing thing or what? So, so when somebody goes on Medicare for the first time, uh, they end up on a list and, uh, we only call the people that we mailed something to, to make sure they received it. Um, and for okay. some reason we okay. had your number for her, but I don't know exactly how Medicare does that. Do you have her number? No, sir. I do not. Okay. Let me give it to you. Yes, sir. Or you can either try to call this afternoon, or I can have her to give you a call. So uh, a, good, a good objection comes up is, how did you get my number? And the truth is, somebody going on Medicare for the first time is going to be on a list, and we're calling oh, that on. list. We're mailing okay. that I list, right? So we have a list of people who are turning 65, and, and when somebody goes on Medicare, they end up on the list. And I just told them exactly what the truth is on that. Okay, okay, well, just give the same call on uh, on my phone, and I'll be home around, I know, by, say, uh, 545. Yes, sir. I'll just call around 6 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, just call about 6. Very, very important here. Notice how, how he's saying, why don't I have her call you? And I say, well, why don't I call her, right? So he, he, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have control over, over my schedule, over, over the conversation, and I want to have the ball in my hand. And, and by doing so, I, I do that by, by telling him, well, I'll call her versus having her call me. Because, I mean, we all know this. What are the chances of them actually calling back? Um, and I don't have a relationship with her yet, so I don't expect her to call me back, right? He probably would call me back if he was the one who's gone on Medicare for the first time. But because I don't have a relationship with her, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to actually get her to pick up the phone and call me, which is why I want to have control over this conversation and say, well, I'll call her instead. Six o'clock, 
and you and her can figure out what kind of package on the insurance she needs and yeah. what's the best for us. You know what I mean? Now you're a Notice how his language changed. I never once said anything about selling them anything. I'm calling to educate, right? So I'm calling to go over the information that Medicare has been sending them. But notice how his language changed, help her decide on a package. So I didn't do any of that. All I did was establish enough credibility, enough rapport, and notice how his language is what's changing. Over there, right? Not far, yes, from, Dawson, not yeah. far from Dawsonville? No, it's not. It's not very far at all from Dawsonville, no. I, uh, I love the area, Blue Ridge. What I, what I did there is I, I Googled where they are, and, and then I... Um, um, Ask that question again. I just went to Google Maps, Googled where they are, and I'm just trying to build enough of a relationship to where he likes me, and he can he can be on my team and convince his wife to talk to me or answer the phone whenever I whenever I call because he likes me. In like Helen, Georgia, man, I just love it over there, Cleveland. Oh yeah, well we're <laughs> we're in Cleveland, Georgia, working today. Me and another guy, we paint and. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a nice town. I don't know if you've been to Dahlonega lately, but it's uh, been a couple you know, of years. Growing. I used it's to. I, yeah, yeah. It seems like everybody from up north and from west is moving over there. It seems like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Which keeps you yes, busy. Sir. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But I'm still getting too old. We can quit this stuff one of these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, understand. I'm too old. But I don't want. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah. My, my name is Eugene. My name is Eugene. Eugene? I, yeah, okay. Yes, okay. I, I, I don't want to keep you from your work. I'll just call to, tonight about 6 o'clock. Yeah, this calls. Y'all figure out what kind of package she needs right there, and we'll just uh, go from our Eugene. How about that? Yes, sir. You have a good, blessed day, okay? All right, buddy. Good talking to you. Thank All you. Right, thanks. Too, Bye. So, so notice how, how just stick, sticking to the script, um, calling them about helping, helping, helping. I want to help you. I want to educate you. This is about you. It's not about me. Notice how they, he did a lot of the talking, not me. Notice how at the end I was able to build a, a relationship with him, right? So, so I'm going to do the same thing with the wife on, later today on the appointment, but I just want you to understand that it is really, really important that you remind them of why you're calling so that way they're listening. Tell them how you can help them, not who you are. Who cares who you are? That's not important right now, which is why I say I'm Eugene. That's it. I'm Eugene right now. We'll get to who I am and my credentials and, and my licenses and my company name. We'll get to that later. But I don't come out with them saying, well, I'm a licensed agent, blah, blah, The reason why I don't do that is because none of that's important until we establish the fact that I can help them and that they need help. And so this entire conversation, after I've reminded them as to why I was calling, then it's just a matter of making them understand that I'm calling to help them. So if you like videos like this, feel free um, to comment below on maybe what you would have done different, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like about the video. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm, I'm going to get back to regular posting so that way you can, uh, uh, so I can help you uh, have conversations like this on the phone. If you need leads and you want leads like this, I can help you generate those kinds of leads. The description is down below. If you need help, if you've already got a bunch of business coming in and you need uh, help, we can help you with the virtual assistant. If you need names, right, if you need people who are turning 65, I have a data company, datadownloadcenter.com. The description is down below. Um, and if you just need, need help, just email me. And if you need somebody to listen to your conversations and give you some coaching, I would love to do that for you. If you need help with contracting, if you need help with just about anything, just look at the description below and everything you need is, is down there. And again, my name is Eugene and thank you so much for watching. Take care.